So you're trying to decide between the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 or the Samsung Galaxy Note 5. Is it worth your money to pay the difference for the Galaxy Note 5 or should you save your money and get the Galaxy Note 4? Hopefully watching this video will help you determine whether it's justifiable to pay the extra money or not. Let's get started. What's going on YouTube? This is what would Josh do and this is a video comparing the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 to the Samsung Galaxy Note 5 or if you'd like to say comparing the Note 5 to the Note 4. Either way, it's just fine. I'm going to let you know is it worth going from the Note 4 to the Note 5 or if you have a Note 3 should you go to the Note 4 or the Note 5? If you don't have either, which one should you get? Should you save money and get the Note 4? Should you just spend the extra money and get the Note 5? Hopefully this video will help you decide that. So the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 was released almost a year ago. It is still an amazing device. Absolutely amazing. There is nothing wrong with this phone. It's at the point now where every phone is just a little bit better than the previous one. There's no night and day difference. You're not going to be like, oh man, I had the Note 4. I spent the $800. I got the Note 5. It was totally freaking worth it. Unless you've got money to burn and you're an absolute tech head and you have to have the latest and greatest, the Note 4 is still an amazing device that you should definitely consider. Let's go over some things that are pretty freaking obvious. The camera is about the same on each device. If you take a picture with both devices, you're not going to go, oh, that was the Note 5. That's clearly a better picture. No, not at all. They both have damn near identical stuff. The camera is the same on each. It might use a better, more updated lens, but as far as megapixels, it is the same. I will say the front-facing camera on the Note 5 does record beyond 1080p. It's 1440p, so a little bit higher quality, just under 4K, but just over 1080p. The four gigs of RAM, you're really not gonna notice a difference opening apps. I mean, if you have some very high demanding games open, yeah, you might notice it then, the extra gig, because Samsung does like to add a lot of bloat to their phones. I will say though, with each you know release, it has gotten better. The Note 5 doesn't feel laggy at all, and the Note 4, I never really had any issues with lag on it either. Both of them have fast charging with Quick Charge 2.0, so very nice. Both of them have a 5.7 inch Quad HD display. You can get a 32 gig or 64 gig Note 5. Now there are some options if you go with a 32 gig Note 5, and I'm gonna definitely go over that because honestly not having a micro SD card slot for me isn't the end of the world, but the removal battery part, that is, that is an issue. And we're also we're gonna address that because the Note 5 does have really good battery life. I'm getting over a day easily and sometimes two days with just light usage. So I really don't have any complaints. Plus it takes less than an hour to charge it up with the quick charger. So I, again, both of these, the SD card and the battery, there are solutions to make that not as big as a problem as they are. But again, we're gonna go over all that. So here we go. If you take the back off of the Note 4, you're gonna notice that we have an SD card slot and I have a 128 gig micro SD card in there at the moment because it does support that. It takes a nano SIM, but all phones do. Actually, it takes a micro. I have a little adapter. It's a little German based adapter. Uh, I'll provide a link in the description if somebody wants a link to it. But I, I just basically buy like them in bundles and I stick them in the phones because I hate going to the store and getting new SIM cards. So I, I just keep a little adapter in there at all times. Uh, currently, this SIM card is in the M9. I'm using that at the moment just because my wife wants to. She was using this phone, but she wants to tr try out the M9 and see if she likes it. And so far, she does. But yeah, so it's just a little adapter in there. I'll put a link in the description if someone wants them. But you've got that SD card right there. And you can take them out and you can put any other micro SD card in there. So if you have movies and you're going to be on a long trip, you can put a 128 gig card in there and watch a ton of 1080p movies on this quad hd screen and then this battery this battery it's down to 30 percent i'm fixing to leave the house what i can do is keep using this battery until it dies but take this battery out of the little charger and bring it with me or i can take this battery out of here and i can put it inside the charger and then i can take this battery and put it in the phone 
and I can go ahead and plug that into like the same charger I used to charge my phone up. And now this is charging, which takes about two hours. I did a separate video on this thing. I'll link to it in the description. And then this one lasts me all day and then some. And so this one's charged many, many, many hours ago. Now I have two batteries. Furthermore, you can get third party options from like Anchor or Zero Lemon. And now you have these things that you just plug into the wall. You charge up the battery on your phone and you swap them out, you're good to go. And if you're gonna be on vacation, if you're in the military, if you're gonna be away from a charger for a while, you can even go with this big bad wolf right here, a Note 4 10,000 milliamp hour extended battery from Zero Lemon. I also did a video of this guy. So what you're gonna do is just take the battery off your phone, you put this battery in there, and boom, you put the case around it, and now you have a brick, you have a tank. There's no denying that, but if you're a power user and you're tethering to your laptop because you've got a presentation due or you've got to have a, a chat with somebody over Google Hangouts or something, you've got this thing tethering and you don't have to worry about it dying for many, dude, I've used this thing while tethering on vacation and man, you can tether for so many freaking hours of like five devices connected to your phone via mobile hotspot and it's just not going to die anytime soon. And then you can get a week of standby out of this battery or two to three days of just heavy hitting that battery hard with things you do on your phone every day, playing games, tweeting, uploading pictures, recording videos, uploading them to Facebook, YouTube, whatever. This is an amazing option. And unlike a battery case where you've got all the bulk of the battery case and then a little battery inside that case that basically just charges your phone's internal battery, you've actually got a solution here that replaces the battery completely. Really, really, really like this. When I'm at home, I don't need my phone to be this huge. I'm near a charger or I can just pop these in there. But this is definitely a solid option to have laying around if you're gonna be gone for a long time and you want your phone to last for a very, very long time. And then when you're done and you wanna go back to your normal battery, you can just go ahead and do that. Also, another positive thing about the big battery is if you're watching a video that you store on your 128 gig micro C card and your kids in the back seat, they can watch that movie, several movies, without worrying about the phone dying. So it's pretty awesome. Plus you got the protection of a case in case your kid decides to drop it or something. But now let's talk about the Note 5's battery real quick. I get a day of usage out of this every single time. I have no complaints at all. And if I'm gonna be gone in 30 minutes, I've got this little zero lemon quick charger here that will quick charge my phone and in 30 minutes I go from 20% to like 80%, maybe even a little bit more. Maybe I'm damn near full because it takes just under an hour to fully charge it from empty to full using this little guy right here. It does come with a quick charger, yes. But if you have lost your quick charger or if you have, you know, it's whatever reason you need another one for the work or something at the office, this is a very good solution and I've been using this for a few weeks now and I absolutely love it. So I get to charge my phone in just under an hour from empty to full or 30 minutes I can go from you know 30% to 90% or 80% or something like I can get most of my battery charged very quickly in this phone and then I'm going to get a day of usage out of it. So it's not an issue. The battery is very good on this thing but again it is super nice to leave the house and just swap batteries out real quick. Take 10 seconds out of your day to swap batteries out real quick and have a fully charged battery ready to go. And as far as the micro SD card, not having one on here, you've got, you've got absolutely nothing to worry about. These are the revised versions of the micro SD card reader I'm using. Minova was kind enough to send these out to me. Basically, some people complained about them being tight fitting or the LED was very dim, which was very true. I didn't even notice it at first. You had to actually be very, very, like, <laughs> like look close up to it to see it. But they said they've improved it. I haven't really tested these out yet, but I'm going to soon. But anyways, you've got these little guys right here, and I keep this on my keychain at all times. This little micro SD card that everybody complains about, you can go ahead and take that and plug it into a little card reader like this. Look, 128 gigs, all right? And then you can take it, and you can plug it into the bottom of your Note 5, and then the screen lights up. We're going to go ahead and unlock it. It should launch the My Files app. And boom. I just, uh, this does have twerp recovery, the latest, and it has uh, Super SU. 
Uh, and I also just flash the the thing that lets you uh, fix the SD card issue with KitKat and Lollipop. Uh, this is on Lollipop. I just actually updated it. It had been on KitKat for a very long time. But I just flashed Super SU to it and the latest recovery and the little mod there. So that's the beautiful thing about buying these on T-Mobile because the bootloader is not locked. And you can root them very easily just by flashing a recovery and then Super SU or using Chainfire's CF Auto Root method. In fact, the Note 5 did get Torp Recovery just two days ago. I have not flashed it yet. I'm kind of... I don't know. I, I'm, I'm definitely will eventually. But at the time, I, I don't really know. And all of my Titania backup for my... My wife wanted her Fallout game save backed up from her Note 4 to her M9. So I just basically put it on this little SD... I backed it up to the SD card. And then I put it inside her phone. And boom. Her Fallout shelter was restored on her M9 from her Note 4. She didn't lose a damn thing. It's freaking awesome. Being rooted is a very, very good thing. So these files right here that I have... I can go ahead and just take them... And I can copy them to my phone's internal storage and then paste. Boom. Now I have that file on my internal storage. So if you're someone that's like, oh, it doesn't have an SD card, I won't buy it. That's not that's not your only option. I now have 128 gigs sitting right here on the bottom of my phone. And if I want to charge my phone, I can use a wireless charger while, say I'm backing up all of my apps or something and I want to back them up to external storage using Titanium Backup. If you've got, this is just a little Anchor uh, wireless charger, but if you've got a wireless charger, you just put your phone on it and it charges your phone's battery while you've got, you know, music or a file transferring. And if I record a video with this phone's 4K camera, I can go ahead and move that video over to here and then take this out and put it in the phone or... Or, if I don't want to take the back off the phone and or the case off the phone, I can just plug it into the bottom of this phone and transfer it. So, having an SD card isn't the end of the world. But please don't get me wrong. I do wish they would have included one. The M9 did not have a removable battery. But you could take the... It was like a little SIM card tray. You, you put a micro SD card in it. And boom, it was ready to go. So, I don't know why they couldn't have just included a micro SD card. Why that would have been so freaking hard for them to do. But in the end, it's not the end of the world if your phone does not have one. I'm not trying to make excuses for Samsung. They shouldn't have gone backwards and not included one. Don't get me wrong. But if you don't have one, it's not like, oh, I if I don't have an SD card, I can't get the phone. Because you do have an SD card on your keychain. And then when you're done with it, just put it in here. And then put that on your key ring and boom. I have one on my key ring at all times. So I can... Back up my Nexus 6, my Nexus 5, my Note 5, and I can restore the files between the devices. It's super freaking awesome. All right, enough about the battery and the SD card. We've gone over that. If you get the Note 5, there are solutions to your battery problem. Quick charge. It's awesome. And your phone lasts a whole day. If you need to have extra storage, you've got 128 gigs on your keychain. I mean, all of us have... Most of us, anyways, have cars where we push a button, it unlocks our car. Those things are more than twice the size of this little guy right here. So don't suck about this taking up room on your keychain. And then if you have a big movie or a big 4K video or 1080p video, you can move it from your phone to your friend's phone without worrying about a computer or how are we going to get this video? How, let me send this to you. Oh, it's going to take hours to send this 2 gig video to you. No, it can take just a couple minutes with this little guy right here. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's get off. I dig I digress. I digress. All right. So the cameras on these two are identical, 16 megapixels on the back. The front facing camera is definitely better than the Note 4, but this does have a 1080p front camera, which looks fantastic and I've recorded videos on my second channel from the front facing camera on this phone and it looks just fine. 1080p works great for me, but 1440p is definitely better. The speaker is on the back here, so when you lay your phone down, you're mostly covering it up. It does have a tiny little dimple that's supposed to keep it from being completely covered, but whatever. On this, it's on the bottom, so when you're laying it down flat, you're going to hear that little speaker from right there. And it's going to be a little bit easier to direct the sound towards you with your hand than it is with this guy, with it being on the back here. The S-Pin on this one, you just basically put your finger in there, slide it out, and it doesn't go in the other way very far. It doesn't. Just put it in there. You're done. On this one, 
it's a little clicking mechanism, which is kind of cool. I like it, but I've actually I've actually seen it like that many many times without doing it on purpose. I guess it just got bumped in my pocket or something. I don't really know, but you just basically pull it out like this. And with this guy, Samsung did not think about this clearly, because if you put it in there past a certain point, there's a little mechanism in there that gets trapped on this. And when you pull it out, you basically break that little connector in there. And now it's not going to know that your S Pen is removed from your phone and you won't be able to do things like these from a locked screen. Or if you unlock your phone, you're going to see little uh, little thing here. Let's see if we can go ahead and get that to come up by putting the S Pen back in and pulling it out. So now it's going to have this right here. You won't see that because it doesn't know that it was removed from your phone. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Anybody that did that because it was dark and they were fiddling around with their phone and they weren't really looking very closely, it was dark. You can't see your S Pen. They just put it in expecting it to go in the right way. Now their phone's screwed. They're going to T-Mobile. They're going to Sprint. They're going to Verizon. They're going to whatever carrier they got this phone from and they're getting that phone replaced because now it's broken. I hope Samsung gets so many freaking replacements that they're like, okay, fine. We're going to fix that. We're going to make it towards, there's no way for this to possibly go in the wrong way. And if you do put it in the wrong way, it's not like it's going to permanently break your phone. That's just something Samsung, they just weren't smart. They were not smart at all. If I let my freaking kid borrow my phone, now I got to be like, don't touch the S Pen. Don't do it. Because she loves to draw my phone. Every time we go somewhere, it's like, hey, daddy, can I draw on your phone? I want to draw pictures and stuff or I want to color something. I have to tell her not to put the S-Pin back in there because if she puts it in wrong, my phone's stuck. And guess what I'm doing? I'm going to T-Mobile and I'm getting my phone fixed or I'm calling up Square Trade and I'm getting a replacement sent to me. I'm not freaking dealing with that. And Samsung, I hope you get so many recalls. Or you're sending out so many replacements that you do fix this issue someday. All right, I'm done with my little rant there. The home button on this one, you actually have to like slide your finger. Let me go ahead and turn it back on just to... <laughs> Uh, do this but you just slide your finger like that and you unlock it with the note 5 and the s6 you just hold your little finger over there boom it's unlocked i definitely like that method better than that but it takes it a second to register and on this one you just go whoop it's super quick it's super easy so either way you've got a fingerprint scanner that's going to unlock your phone and i like that so much better than being in a crowded place or someone looking over my shoulder and i'm trying to put a little pattern in no i definitely like just holding my finger down and boom, it's unlocked. And I haven't had any issues with it not detecting my finger. And you can scan so many fingers at one time. It's crazy. You just go to settings and you can set little shortcuts up. And that's something we're going to talk about in a second. Uh, as you notice, I don't have S connect or quick connect or whatever up there. We're going to talk about that in just a second. You go to lock screen and security. You go to fingerprints and I'm going to go ahead and put my finger on there. And look, I've got four fingerprints registered. I believe the note four was just three. Uh, it's been a little while since I've set it up, so I don't quite remember. Uh, but then again, if they, this did get released to Android Lollipop, so it could be different. Well, let's actually go ahead and look real quick. As you can see right here, I got S Finder and Quick Connect. And I don't know of a way to change that without rooting it and getting rid of it that way. So let's go ahead and go to Settings here. And then let's go to Security. Oh, Fingerprint Scanner. This one's a little bit different. So... Two fingerprints are registered. It is my wife's fingerprint at the moment, so I'll have to get her to do that. But either way, you've got options on both phones to scan your fingerprint and unlock your phone, which I really, really like that. All right, on this one, I do not have Quick Connect because all I have to do is hit this little edit button here, and at the bottom, I've got S Finder and Quick Connect. So let's go ahead and show you that on both phones. Let's drag down the notifications on both. There's the notification on both phones here. So as you can see, I've got S Finder and Quick Connect, but I don't like that. I don't want those. I never touch those buttons. So I can go to edit and I can go ahead and uncheck those boxes. And now my lock screen looks a little bit more clean or cleaner. It looks a little cleaner than this one. Now, obviously this could get updated and Samsung could put that in there and say, hey, now you can remove those options. But at the time of filming this, the edit option's not there. And if you want to edit it, you can bring this down and press this and then hit edit, but it's not the same. It's not that little thing. There's nowhere on there to change that. So it's just a little minor annoyance. And then if you do root it, you can install 
Uh, Exposed Framework, once it gets a little bit better with Lollipop, there are some ROMs it does work with on Lollipop, but you install Exposed Framework, you install WANAM Exposed, and boom, you're freaking set. You can go ahead and customize that, and it moves it up here in the little top left corner. Both of these have really good cameras. The same amount of megapixels on the back, except the front one is a little better on this device. You go from 1080p to 1440p. This one has removable storage and a removable battery, but again, we've covered that. You can get the Note 5 and rest assured that your battery's gonna last a while and it's gonna be a really quick charge. With the Note 4, you're gonna be able to swap out batteries and buy huge extended batteries if you're a power user and you plan on tethering to a lot of devices for a long time and you don't want to have to worry about your battery dying or if you're in a place where you can't charge your battery while you're tethering or something. Both of these have very similar functionality and if you're someone that likes to root, install custom recovery like me, let me just go ahead and show you that real quick. If you're someone like me that likes to put custom recovery and root your device, you can change whatever you want. You can flash a custom ROM that is taken and ported from the Note 5 and putting it on the Note 4 and all you've got to do is go down here and choose it. Like the SD card fix, I just go ahead and swipe it to flash it. And now any app that wants access to my SD card can get access. Like Titania Backup kept saying in, in uh, sufficient storage. When I know that wasn't true, all I had to do was easily flash this little mod here. Now Titania Backup is able to write to my SD card. And so is every other app. In closing, the Note 5 is definitely an upgrade to the Note 4 in most ways. It's got a little bit more RAM, it's got a little bit faster processor, it's got a little bit better this, it's got a little bit better that. It drops the SD card, it drops the battery. Neither of those are game-changing, breaking things for me. I definitely have ways around those things. If you have the Note 4, and if you don't have an upgrade, or if you really don't want to spend the extra money, you don't have to. You have an amazing device that's going to be good for a very long time. If you have a Note 2, should you go to the Note 3, or should you go to the Note 4, or should you go to the Note 5? Now, my simple answer for that is, how much do you rely on extended batteries? How much do you rely on swapping your battery out right before you leave the house and le having a fully charged battery? If you've never purchased an external battery or an extended battery, then get the Note 5. If you've purchased extended batteries or external batteries like this, then get the Note 4. It's a simple option. If you're used to it on your Note 2 or your Note 3, get the Note 4. It's that simple. But if you're never going to buy these things, consider the Note 5. If you're someone that likes to record lots of videos and take lots of pictures, go with the 64 gig Note 5 and then spend $10 on one of these little guys right here and transfer the pictures or videos over to this guy and then keep it on your keychain and then send that video or your picture to your friend. Take this and put it in your computer and transfer it that way without using your phone. Is it worth going from the Note 4 to Note 5? In most ways, no. The Note 5 is very appealing. I love the look of it. It's a pretty slippery phone, but honestly, that removable battery, that's a big deal to me. Based on cosmetics alone, the Note 5 is definitely a sharper phone than the Note 4. I really enjoyed the look of it, but this phone is pretty freaking slippery. So I definitely have a case on it and I got a case on this. I keep cases on my phones just because if you do drop it, I really don't want to mess a phone up that looks this freaking nice and that's this expensive. Oh, I totally almost forgot. If you use your phone to control your TV, if you use it to control your AC unit because you can download an app called Smart Remote that's like five to 10 bucks, uh, whatever price you get it at, I can control my fan or my window unit, I don't have a window unit, but if I did have a window unit, I could control it. I could control anything that accepts an IR signal with this guy right here. That's a big deal. They dropped that. That's another thing. It's like, why? Why did you completely get rid of that? And look at this right here. They could have freaking put an SD card right there. There's nothing there. A little hole and a little, little cut out. They could have put an SD card right there. Just like on the M9, it's on the side. They could have put it on the top. They could have put an IR blaster somewhere on there. Now, honestly, the IR blaster is something I play around with, I toy with. If I'm at McDonald's or if I'm like wanting to troll somebody, I can change the channel, turn the volume up. Can't do it with this phone. Can't do it. It's not possible. There's no IR blaster. That's something to also consider. So it's like they took away features that people loved about their Note 4 and didn't include them in the Note 5. If you're balling uncontrollably and you can afford spending lots of money on a new phone, get the Note 5. 
I love this phone. It's my only phone I'm carrying around at the moment. And I have two carriers. I have T-Mobile on this and I have AT&T on my Nexus 6. I still love my Nexus 6, don't get me wrong. But this is a new phone and I'm having a lot of fun with it and I really enjoy it. But also, I really enjoy the Note 4 and I love leaving my house with 100% battery all the time without worrying about, oh, do I have 30 minutes to charge my phone up real quick? So hopefully you've taken all these things I've given you and you've put it together and decided for yourself which one you think is for you. If you have a Note 4, keep it. It's an amazing device. It's awesome. If you have to have the latest and greatest and you have the extra money, get the Note 5. It's completely up to you. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. I'd greatly appreciate it. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing for more videos like this. I do videos on pretty much anything tech related. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you're not doing so already. This is what Josh do, and I'm out.